At the beginning of the story, we see a group of goblins cooking a pig over a fire, while a man secretly watches them from a distance. However, as he's observing, a piece of wood accidentally falls, making a sound that catches the goblin's attention. Realizing he's been noticed, the man begins to run away, and the goblins chase after him. As he runs with the goblins behind him, the man smiles and suddenly leaps into the air, jumping a great distance ahead. Meanwhile, the goblins fall into a pit, one of the traps the man had set earlier. After they are trapped, we finally see the man's face. He is a boy. As the scene transitions to a new morning, the boy introduces himself by saying that he is currently living a fun and lonely life in another world. The story then shifts to an earlier event during lunch, where the hero, Haruka, was sitting in his classroom reading manga. Although his classmates were present, Haruka sat alone, revealing that he likely didn't have any friends. Haruka explains why he prefers to be by himself. He feels no connection to his classmates. He describes the different groups in his class, including hooligans, fashionable girls known as gals, brave kids, and even smart girls. Haruka feels that he doesn't fit into any of these groups. Just as his solitary life is moving along, a magical summoning circle suddenly appears in the classroom, leaving all the students shocked and causing them to shout in surprise. Seeing the summoning circle, Haruka recognizes it as something he's seen before in manga and comics. However, he has no interest in being transported to another world, so he tries to escape by running toward the door. Despite his efforts, the door won't open, and the magical circle continues to spread throughout the classroom. One by one, the other students begin to vanish, transported to the other world. Desperate, Haruka climbs onto the ceiling of the classroom hoping to avoid the circle. Unfortunately, the circle reaches him as well, and despite his reluctance, he is transported to another world. When Haruka regains consciousness, he finds himself in a strange white room. He wonders why there's no one around, joking that he had expected to be greeted by a beautiful princess or a fat king. Instead, an old man appears. The old man gestures toward Haruka, trying to communicate, though Haruka doesn't fully understand what he's saying. However, he quickly realizes that this old man must be some kind of god, and that the rest of his classmates have already been transported to this other world. Through gestures, the god informs Haruka that those who arrive first get the best options. A large status board appears in front of Haruka, showing the skills he can choose from. However, all the best skills have already been taken by his classmates, leaving only the worst ones for him. Despite this, Haruka starts looking for a skill that might suit him. But to his dismay, all the available options are terrible. Haruka, who had hoped to become a magician, is disappointed to find that not only is magic unavailable, but there are no useful skills left at all. Instead, he's left with skills like company communicator, skills that seem designed for office workers. Frustrated, Haruka calls out to the god, demanding answers. What am I supposed to do with these useless skills? Do something for me, he exclaims. In response to Haruka's complaints, the god tells him that all the remaining skills are now his, whether he likes them or not and sends him off. As soon as the god speaks, the remaining skills, though useless, are absorbed into Haruka and he is transported to another world. Worried about how he will survive with these ridiculous skills, Haruka introduces himself to the audience, revealing his name. Along with the useless skills, Haruka also receives a bag. He soon discovers that this bag has unlimited storage allowing him to carry countless items. Inside the bag, he finds a pair of clothes and some magical items, which he quickly puts on. After changing, Haruka remarks, Now I feel like I'm from another world. Curious about his status, Haruka decides to check it. But first, he has to roll some dice. 
He remembers that rolling the dice is one of the useless skills given to him by the old man. He rolls the two dice, and they land on M. Confused, Haruka wonders what this means, exclaiming, No, this can't be happening. In the next part of the story, Haruka is asked which skill he wants to spend his points on. He decides to invest all his points into luck. Afterward, his status window opens, revealing that his luck stat has reached its maximum, which means that the M stood for max, not mesochasm as Haruka had previously thought. However, all of his other skills remain at level 1. Haruka begins to wonder what he should do next. Should he form a team and travel through this world with others? Or would it be better to remain independent? He even entertains the idea of building a harem in this new world. But then, he realizes that he doesn't see anyone else around. Am I going to be alone here, he wonders. With this in mind, Haruka sets off to find a safe place for himself, deciding to build a house. However, the forest is dense and visibility is limited. Haruka worries about the possibility of a monster attacking him while he sleeps. To address his concerns, Haruka takes out a pair of contact lenses from the bag he received. When he puts them on, he realizes that these lenses allow him to distinguish between poisonous and edible plants. He can also see important information about objects, making these contacts a form of appraisal skill. Using this ability, Haruka identifies some edible mushrooms and begins collecting them. As Haruka continues to explore, he comes across a river. He fills his bag with water and drinks. Soon after, he spots a cave nearby. Cautiously approaching, Haruka peers inside, praying it isn't home to any monsters. When he hears the sound of falling stones, he gets scared but ventures further inside the cave only to discover that it's quite large. Inside, he finds various items that would make living there much easier. Using his temperature magic, Haruka even manages to create a fire. At this point, he begins to realize that the skills he initially thought were useless are in fact very useful. Checking his status again, he notices that his temperature skill has leveled up to become fire magic and he has gained even more new skills. Exhausted, Haruka soon falls asleep. The next morning, he wakes up unharmed and is pleased to discover that no monsters attacked him during the night. He realizes this is due to one of his items, which has a bonus effect of repelling monsters. Feeling relieved, Haruka then remembers he hasn't eaten in a while. He starts a fire, prepares some food, adds a bit of salt, and is delighted to find that his meal tastes delicious. Haruka also discovers a knife and a frying pan inside his bag, which he names Blazer A. After eating, he contemplates where he should go next. He decides to stay in the cave for a while, focusing on gathering food and ensuring his safety. Using his appraisal skills, Haruka collects edible items. However, he soon encounters a group of goblins. Seeing that the goblins are level 8, Haruka hesitates. His only weapon is a piece of wood. Can I win with just this? He wonders. But he knows that eventually he will have to fight in this world. Haruka infuses the wood with magical power and prepares to fight. He attacks the first goblin, striking it in the head and defeating it. Another goblin rushes toward him, but Haruka dodges its attack and knocks it down with his wood. After defeating the goblins, Haruka breathes a sigh of relief. It's now evening, and he goes to the river to wash his face. Proud of his victory, he reflects on his first battle. It may not have been flashy, but he's satisfied with his efforts. Returning to his cave, Haruka eats some of the mushrooms he collected earlier and examines a goblin weapon he found. Unfortunately, it's too small, heavy, and useless for him. He then checks his status and sees that he has leveled up to level 2. With his stats boosted significantly, although Haruka is cautious about encountering more goblins, the level up leaves him feeling excited and confident. On the third day, however, he grows tired of eating mushrooms and craves some meat. 
Determined to strengthen himself, Haruka decides to use his newly acquired magic abilities to boost his power. His appraisal skill has also leveled up, but he notices some items still show question marks, making him unsure of their purpose. Ignoring these for now, he heads outside to practice magic. While exploring, he stumbles upon some nutritious mushrooms but is still frustrated by his limited diet. Deciding to search for meat, Haruka's journey continues. Though he doesn't find any immediately, he realizes he can boost both his physical and magical powers using his magic rap skill. Excited by this discovery, Haruka tests his new abilities, increasing his speed and jumping great distances. His confidence builds and soon after, he encounters two more goblins. This time, Haruka easily defeats both of them, striking them down with his wooden weapon. The thrill of fighting excites him and he begins to enjoy the challenges. However, just as he starts to feel more confident, three strong goblins suddenly appear. Scared, Haruka hides in the bushes, deciding it's better to slip away quietly. From that day on, Haruka continues to train and fight goblins daily. Over time, he grows even more powerful. By the fifth day, Haruka has improved significantly and has even installed a door in his cave decorating the interior to make it more comfortable. Despite this, he still longs for meat, so he sets a trap at night to catch a rabbit. Haruka successfully catches a rabbit, but just as he's about to prepare it, he senses someone nearby. Looking around, he realizes it's a group of hooligans from his class, whom he had wanted to avoid. He tries to go the other way, but soon spots fashionable girls smart boys, and even some of the idiots from his class. Among them is the class rep, and as soon as Haruka sees her, his grip loosens and the rabbit escapes. Haruka starts to think that living alone in this world might be too dangerous. Perhaps forming a team would be safer. He remembers the class rep from elementary school and considers joining her group. But then, he realizes that in this world, he has the freedom to do whatever he wants without anyone stopping him. His life of solitude could be beautiful. With that thought, he decides to remain alone in this new world. The episode ends on this note. To see how Haruka's future unfolds, be sure to like, comment, and share this video. Will Haruka truly be able to live alone in this world, or will he find beautiful companions waiting for him? If you haven't already, Subscribe to the channel to watch new and exciting series